Meet me. Welcome back, boys. So, a lot of you have asked me for this already. I have not watched this video yet. We're going to watch it together. You guys know I always give honest feedback. I'm not about hyping up every new hero. Let's give her the squirrely hero preview treatment. Let's at least watch the intro together. Come there we go. to me. Ooh. Closer. A little closer. I don't know how I feel about this Until voice. Until your darkness intertwines with my emptiness to form one pitch blackness. <laughs> Once you've faced me, you'll become darkness yourself. Ugh. All right, she lost points for her voice. That voice does not Once sound good. This me, um, S3 is iconic, though. Everyone remembers Archdemon Mercedes from uh, the first arc. And her artwork is also super badass. I mean, we're not surprised, but we know what she looked like. Oh, wait, it's not Archdemon Mercedes. It's Archdemon Shadow. Does that mean we can't imprint her with Mercedes? Huh. All right, so 10 for the artwork so far, one for the voice. Let's skip all this nonsense about how they made her and look at her base stats. So Aquarius Mage. Um, what's another Aquarius Mage? I think these are the same base stats as Luluka, so slightly higher attack, um, kind of on a slower end by today's standards, uh, decent defense and some effectiveness. Um, I think that's all we have to say for her. Kind of a higher attack mage. So maybe she's a DPS unit. Um, skill introduction. Let's watch it first. That's how we always do it, right? We watch it first. I mean, it's an S1, so it probably won't look too cool. Yeah, actually, that looks pretty cool. What is that quite? It's pretty cool looking for an S1. So 50% chance each to seal the enemy for two turns before attacking with lightning. What does the each mean? Does she have two chances to seal and then attacking with lightning? Huh. Um, what does seal do? Passive effects do not activate effective only against heroes. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty badass. So with Mola, 75% chance. With Soulburn, only 10 souls, 100% chance. So maybe they just screwed up the English here, and what they mean is... You have a chance to seal them, so you disable their passive right away, and then you attack with lightning. That's probably what they meant. The each implies that there's two chances to seal, but I don't think that would be accurate. So this might be really good against certain heroes, like against something like T. Surin or Champion Serato, or maybe even something like A. Tywin. You um, put the seal on him, and then he can't cleanse the team. Or you put the seal on Champ Z, and they can't counter uh this is a really crazy s1 and let's see their example now that we understand what the heck's going on so they are using it against t surin oh so i think that shows us what we were asking so he uses the s1 immediately sealed and then gets hit with the lightning so against something like a tie wind they won't be able to cleanse and then bam t surin gets one shotted that is sick guys that is sick so 10 out of 10 for her S1. Let's look at the S2. What? Isn't that the same? Oh. Oh, yeah. We know this move, too. Beria. So what does that do? Um, no cooldown. It's a passive. Decreased damage suffered from a critical hit by 20%. 30%. So basically a proof of valor at all times against crits. So I guess they're telling us to build as a bruiser. Um, this is normal Aureus language. After using Touch of Chaos, that's the S1, 35% chance to activate Burst, 70% chance if sealed. What does Burst do? Attacks all enemies with a 60% chance to decrease hit chance for one turn and increasing her combat readiness by 25%. That doesn't seem particularly good. Maybe it does a lot of damage. Let's check out the damage. Okay. It hit a T Surin for 1462 on a crit. And this Archdemon Mercedes I could see here has 13,000 life, so not particularly tanky. And she had attack buff? Okay, so the damage is Garbo. The damage is completely horrendous. That Maybe that's okay. 
if she's not a DPS unit. Let's check out her S3. We all know how her S3 looks already, but it's probably super awesome, so let's look at it. Boom! Drop the bomb. Yeah, you guys remember that when you first started the game and you were trying to beat her. What does this bad boy do? Dissolution. Uh, has no cooldown, so it consumes 5 focus. Attacks all enemies with the power of Ilrios with a... That's a weird word. Ilrios. With a 75% chance, 100% uh, with Molas to inflict 2 burn effects. Can't be countered, grants an extra turn. What? Why? Oh, okay. Let's... Does it do crazy? So she has attack buff here. Maybe it does crazy damage. Wait, what? What did it hit him for? Like, one damage? 1297 damage? With two burns? And you can't even open with it? You have to wait five... Does the S2 give focus? Where's the S2? It doesn't say it gives focus. The S1, you get one focus. So you have to somehow S1 five times, and your reward for it is hitting them for, like, 1,300 damage? And the burns don't make any sense to me. What? Okay, so, so far, her S1, 10 out of 10. This thing is sick. Her S2, I'll give it like a 5 out of 10. Like the having a built-in proof, crazy strong. That is awesome. The burst is pretty underwhelming. I mean, that's kind of whatever. I mean, if you put her on a counter set and it I wonder if they say if it can proc on counters. Because you know like that whole um, uh, controversy with Alencia when they suddenly figured out you can't proc Mind's Eye on counters? I wonder if this procs on counters and you put her on counter set, that might make her a little bit better. Although we'll make her very dangerous to use against things like SSB and LR Crow. Um But still, this thing seems to do next to no damage. We don't know how this Archdemon Mercedes is built. We do know it has attack buff. Um, so, the S3, I think this is like a 1 out of 10. I don't understand it at all. It does barely any damage based on what we're seeing. So it does give them an extra turn, so you can theoretically wombo combo them by S3-ing, and then you get an extra turn, you S1, and then procs the S2. But what does it matter if all those moves do next to no damage, and you can't even open with it? You need to get 5 focus, and there's no way to get focus other than to use the S1 5 times. So, I don't understand it. I don't understand this kit at all. Um... You know, probably someone out there is going to be like, oh, you're just dumb, Dr. Score. I mean, I've been playing this game for a long time, guys. I, I don't get it. I'm not going to say that there aren't situations where I might use this hero. Like, if someone in RTA drafts into me a Tywin, C. Zerato, T. Surin, all heroes that are susceptible to seal, absolutely. She might be really good, but you better bring a soul burn because you're going to feel really stupid if you got 25%ed here. Also, I'm assuming it's a normal debuff, right? So what if they have immunity? What if it just gets resisted? What if it doesn't even proc at all? Have you guys ever used Lilius before without Molas? And at 90%, you just get screwed? Uh, it happens. So it's not even going to be reliable to shut someone down with it unless you bring another major Taga Hells. So, I don't know. Maybe the, uh, the example one's just built really bad because if these multis were better and you put her on, like, counter set or something and she was actually proccing this thing and it did... A decent amount of damage, maybe, but I mean, this is a T Surin. T Surins don't have any defense. The S1 couldn't really break the barrier. The S2 hits her for, and T Surin doesn't really have any damage mitigation. It's just that she doesn't get hit for more than 50% of her life. So this is what it's going to hit for. Notice the LR Crow didn't even touch his barrier. He doesn't have a thick barrier. So I don't get it. And She's not a debuffer. Like, Fairy Tale Tenebria, you understood it, because if you build her as a bruiser, she has some wonky debuffs on her S2, right? Like, silence, defense break, unhealable, devastating, she can strip you. Um, she has the, uh, whatever, the special provoke. Um, she had a lot of oomph to her kit. Like, this thing, I don't get it, because 
The S1, if you want to be reliable, you're also going to have to build some effectiveness. Like, granted, against T-Cern, Champ, Serata, you won't need it, but A-Tywins, LR Krauss, those kind of things very often have, like, 50 to 100 effect resist. So you're going to need to have some effectiveness to build on her. But then what's the problem? If you have her with effectiveness, you also need to build her with some bulk because that's what her S2 wants you to do because otherwise she's just going to get trained and be a drain on your team because you're going to easily kill her. So you got to give her some bulk. So now she needs health and defense. If you plan on using her in RTA, she better have some speed and she's not particularly fast on her own, 108. So RTA, you're probably going to want her minimum like 180 speed. Granted, she has that 25% self-CR push, but it might not even proc, in which case you're screwed. And remember, the seal can just be cleansed off or immunityed. Um, and the S3 to me is just garbo because it doesn't make any sense. It takes you forever to ramp it up. And this is an attack buffed example. Granted, it's on two knights. But still, I mean, that is not good damage with attack buff. She did not crit on LR Crow though. So I guess this could have been like 3,500. But remember, burn is based on your attack stat. So... Now you need effectiveness, health, defense, speed, attack. You need literally every stat in the game. So are people even going to use the S3? I think if you're going to use Archdemon Mercedes, it's revolving around the S1. There's something on the other team, some kind of passive that you really want to shut down. And you're going to bring Archdemon Mercedes and seal them up. But then what if they just bring Lilius or something? Like, what are you going to do? They just bring Lilius... And some other cleanser and you can't seal them what if the enemy team doesn't have anything that even has a passive there are a lot of heroes in the game that don't have passives that are still really good like uh huh. lilius doesn't have a passive i mean unless they consider deactivating the dual attack no that's not considered pat that's part of the move so it's useless against heroes that don't have a passive to begin with even if they do have a passive it could just be removed or immunityed, right? I, I didn't read anything here that says it can't be resisted or anything like that, so... I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm assuming... Oh, wait. One good thing about this move, though, now that I think about it, is when we watched it, the seal is before the attack, so it cannot miss. So that will be good, so... um Against something like a Mursa that has built an evasion, you could definitely hit her. Um, won't work on Raya Lit because that's an evasion buff that he has. It's not a passive. <clears throat> and how often do you run into Mursa? Like, at the top, some people draft her because she is strong and has the speed imprint, but it's like a 1 in 10 matches kind of situation. So, yeah, I mean, all right. There is one caveat to this. Remember, you can never trust skipping heroes because Smilegate has a tendency to buff them after everyone complains. And when they buff them, they buff them hard. So if you skip her, uh, it might be a good decision now. It might be a terrible decision in three months. So I'm not going to say skip her. Um, but hey, if we had a guarantee that she's going to stay like this, to me... If you don't have infinite mystics, easy skip. Easy skip. Because even in the situations where she might be really good, they could just ban her. They could just ban her or bring a cleanser or bring an immunity. Because what are you going to do? If you're going to try to shut down a pass, are you going to build her really fast? And then her other two moves are completely meaningless because she does no damage. The only thing special about her is her S1. If you're just going for damage, bring something better. You want burn damage? Bring Holiday Yafin. You want a proccing counter thing? Then bring SSB. Like, the S1 is the only reason to bring her, and it can be easily countered by very common heroes in the game. So, easy skip, guys. That That's my opinion. Um, I haven't watched anyone else's videos on her, so... You know, if you subscribe to other, like, legend players and they're way better than me, feel free to watch those videos. Maybe they have some situations that I'm missing. To me, my honest opinion is this is a very easy skip. Are there going to be situations where she is the perfect fit? Yes. that That's true of almost every hero. But the real question is, how many times does that situation actually come up? Like, when if you're in an RTA draft... 
How many times out of 100 drafts are you going to be like, bam, Archdemon Shadow is what I need here? I think it's going to be less than 10 of those situations. Like something like LR Crow or Rylet or Arby. It's like 90 out of 100 matches. You're like, yeah, Arby will work here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, uh, LR Crow will work. You can just fit them in. Chi's going to be hard to fit in. Like if someone's trying to cleave you, are you going to bring this? Absolutely not. Like going to be completely useless if you're in like a bruiser versus bruiser match are you going to bring this not really not unless you have um something you really need to seal because she barely does any damage and the s2 is going to be very dangerous against two common bruiser units lr kraut ssb if she's constantly proccing this thing they're going to be blasting you in the face non-stop so uh i don't know that's just my opinion on this hero i think it's an easy skip um, other than the fact that she might get some kind of enormous broken buff in the future, but none of us can anticipate that. So uh, if you guys are starved on Mystics, I think it's almost guaranteed that whatever is coming next is going to have better use case applicability than her. That's just my opinion. I know some people who love this hero are going to trash all over me. That's fine. This is my channel and I'm always about honesty. This is my honest opinion. And also, it doesn't help that she sounds like someone's Until grandma. Until your darkness intertwines with my emptiness. Until your darkness intertwines with my emptiness. She sounds pretty retarded. So, um, anyways, that's my review or preview. Who knows? Maybe they geared her like an idiot in these um, showcases. And when she comes out on release, she actually hits for like 20k on her S1. And they use the naked Archdemon Mercedes. But usually in their previews, they have them pretty geared. Assuming that this is a geared Archdemon Mercedes, I am very underwhelmed, guys. Very underwhelmed. So anyways, we'll end on that note. Thanks for watching. If you guys know how you're supposed to use this hero and you think I'm completely wrong, won't hurt my pride. Call me out in the comment section below. Teach the squirrel because I don't get it. I don't think this will be a good hero in 90% of situations. Thanks for watching. Till next time, peace out.